I'm back. You may have noticed that last week I missed sending out the update, and that's because I was basically just non-existent. I had I got COVID. <laughs> Who knew? That's still a thing. I went to Vegas, gave a speech there, came back. Uh, what happens in Vegas apparently doesn't stay in Vegas. It comes home with you and then imp impacts your whole family. So uh, I'm glad to be back. Sorry for missing last week. We're going to keep this one relatively tight just for the simple fact that I am playing a little catch-up. But we got some good stuff this week. So first and foremost, rates, eh, sideways. They're, they're still coming down a little. But here's the here's the good news, bad news, guys. Good news is we're getting some economic news like lower inflation numbers, lower job numbers uh, that would help us ordinarily. But because the government keeps spending so much freaking money, we're having to print you know, or, or issue new treasuries. And so for that reason, it kind of competes with us. And rates haven't moved as much as I'd like them to. They have moved favorably, though. You guys can see this chart. We're in the best position we've been in since basically call it March time period, give or take. So our group, for anybody closing immediately, we are in a locking bias uh, just because we've had a good run. The good news is we're well above these lines of support, all those little wavy, wavy lines. I think we're going to be good. So um, we'll see. We'll see what the future brings. We are still, so big part on new construction here, guys. Uh, these are some numbers that come out. You can see year over year, the very top one, permits. Like these are the homes that are coming for the future. Like this is where they've gotten approval to do this. It's down almost 10% year over year. So we already know, you've heard me say it like a broken record, there is a housing shortage. Uh, being down 10% will not fix that. So I we are not in a bubble. We are still in a housing shortage, but builders with rates, cost of borrowing, even for them, cost of borrowing, it's just they're not as aggressive as they need to be or should be just because where the market currently is, but it doesn't solve the problem. So house prices, especially here in Dallas-Fort Worth, and I'll prove it to you, uh, I think are still going to keep going up in the near future. So the National Association of Home Builders, uh, just look at that first column. Anything under 50 is usually not good. And you can see that basically home builders are negative, 43, 48, 47, 28. Um, as far as that, that's their sentiment. F above 50 means they're expanding Below 50 means they're contracting. So it's not a big number under 50, but you can see that the sentiment, they're just not starting as many homes. So here's the good news. Dallas-Fort Worth, for those watching here in North Texas, we are dominating the new home starts nationally. We rank first in the DFW area. Uh, year over year, we're up. That's good. And you guys can see the Dallas-Fort Worth is number one. Houston's number two. Florida, I'm a little surprised by Phoenix a little bit, um, but you guys can see Austin, San Antonio. So Texas cities are doing great. To zoom in here on the North Texas area, you guys can see the map and where it is as far as what cities have the most stars and where the most most growth is. And some of that, guys, as far as the rankings, uh, look at all the Texas cities in the most affordable neighborhoods. And so uh, these are also considered the safest neighborhoods. So the top 10 safest neighborhoods you see, we got uh, Texas League City, which is Houston, technically. Uh, that's number four. Sugar Land, also Houston. Pearland, Houston. So apparently Houston's the way to be. But as far as these cities here in North Texas, seven of them in North Texas came across as the most affordable neighborhoods in America. So that is awesome. McKinney, Frisco, Grand Prairie, Plano, Carrollton, Richardson, Denton. Shout out to you guys. Keep up the good work. Um, mortgage applications, not surprising with rates going up. I thought this was real interesting. The orange line on the right is interest rates. And you can see the applications, and this is for purchases, is that gray area. And you guys can kind of see as rates go up, that came down. It's just, you can see how even pre-pandemic, 2015 through 2020, um, you can see that we're lower levels than even those years. So pre-pandemic, these are still really low years. And it's, again, because of where rates are. You guys can see that correlation. For refinances, not real surprising, right? When rates go up, uh, there's actually nothing shocking about this. <laughs> Outside of it's more than I would have guessed. Apparently, a third of the market is still refinances, which blows my mind. But apparently, a lot of divorces. Um, we got to pay off your ex-spouse, cash out, because credit card consumer debt's an all-time high. And so is equity, so people can tap that. Uh, so that makes sense. So, you know, remodeling, right? People tapping refinances because they don't want to move because they can't find a better house than what they're at. So it makes sense. So if you're one of those out of three folks that need a mortgage that wants to refinance cash out, call us. We're happy to help. That is a shameless plug. Um, let's see. As far as I've always said about a third of the market is cash, like no mortgage. Uh, apparently I'm wrong. That's now apparently closer to 40%, which I thought was a pretty big number. So um 38 and a half was the most recent data from 2022. 
and then let's have some fun. This house, if you want it, if you care enough to Google it and figure it out, more power to you, but put the address in there in case you do care. This house is not a house. Apparently it's in a neighborhood and it's a data center. So if like you want to mine Bitcoin or something like that, you can do it. It's got like, I think it said like all these backup generators. It's got cooling systems. It's got the whole works, but it, they made it look like a house because it's in a neighborhood. So apparently not an HOA, but it's 2.4 mil. So if you want to mine, buy, mine some Bitcoin, call me. I just want to know who you are because that sounds fun. You can pay 2.4 million and go do that in North Dallas. Uh, this one, this one's from my mom. She can get under telescope, but there's apparently a new star that's coming. Uh, it's a Nova, not a supernova, but a Nova. And if you're a real nerd, the CNN articles down here, I read it kind of some of it's interesting for about 30 seconds. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. But here's where it is. If you're a nerd and nowhere, a nerd in a very respectful way. If you know these constellations, it's basically next to Hercules. You can see the little dots of where it's going to show up. Uh, lastly, for the good, just, you know, feel good story, whoever this dude was, good for him. God bless him. He served not just in World War II, but also the Korean War. And uh, after Mr. Allen deceased, he became the oldest uh, organ donor ever in the United States. So good for him. He's helped another life. What a good dude. Um, and that's my feel good story of the day. Our meme of the week. This is so true. Check it out. First time home buyers, skipping some steps, maybe too many at once if you're going to make an offer without doing the proper thing. So build your credit, save for down payment, get pre-qualified. I would argue get pre-qualified should technically be the number one thing because we can help you build credit, save down payment, all that fun stuff. As always, guys, we love and appreciate you. Share, subscribe, forward, all that fun stuff. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. Uh, don't get COVID. The best way to do that is just avoid Vegas. <laughs> don't go to Vegas. And uh, enjoy your day and call us if you need us. Have a great day.